Welcome back to Chasing Whiskey. I'm Terry. And I'm not James. <laughs> this is Trevor. So uh, James has some uh, family uh, that he's taking care of right now. And so uh, we reached out on the folks of Instagram and asked whether or not we should just keep on going or wait for James. And uh, overwhelmingly, a number of people told me to keep drinking. So we're going to keep drinking. Yeah, we'll see what they say next week. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so welcome, Trevor. Thank you very much. Um, I'll get into asking you questions about yourself after we go over what bottle we're going to drink. Sure. Good idea? We're primed. Yep. All right. That's good. So, we are trying Compass Box. Well. Cheers. Cheers. So this is a blended whiskey. I have not had it. Uh, we were in a little series where we're doing it out and about with blended whiskeys, blended scotch whiskeys particularly. Um, but we're no longer out and about because it's too much work to set up. <laughs> it's a beautiful box. It is. Gold embossed. Wow. Impressive. Imagine what's inside it. <laughs> <laughs> My happy. guess is that it's I'd be happy at this point. <laughs> Easily pleased. What do you think? So, here we are. So Cross. it's Compass Box Oak Cross. And apparently Compass Box makes a lot of different versions of their blended whiskey. Um, but there you go. Um, you've obviously had whiskey before. I have had. I've uh, had whiskey with no, Trevor. So. Devil. <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider yourself very experienced with whiskey or not very experienced with whiskey? Uneducated. Experienced, but uneducated. Yeah. I've so, never thought of doing this much. Yeah. And so you've seen James and I show obviously yes. um so you know what we're doing yeah so so i've uh, watched maybe three quarters uh roughly. Should have them all. all right why don't you open it up tell me what you think of the color sure pour us a little dram and let's get it right into it yeah let's do that There we go. What do you think of the color of the glass, Trevor? Oh, that's a nice little goldy color, kind of a light, uh, I guess you might call it an amber. Little, uh, it's nice, uh, that color. <laughs> <laughs> like something came to mind, but I don't know. What? No, go ahead. No, I mean, that, you know what? A pair. I, okay. I, I smell a little And are you saying that because you saw the episode where I said a pair and I got it right? No. <laughs> That's the beauty of not watching any of your broadcasts. <laughs> I'm not biased. Yeah. I smell a bit of a vanilla. Um, there's something sweet there for sure. And I don't know what it is, but I had vanilla for a second, but I don't have it anymore. Something really like perfume. It's like caramel, sort of butterscotchy. You think? I kind of get a bit of butterscotch in that look. It's hard to tell. Mm. Anyway, what yeah. do you think? Should we get into it? All right, let's have a little uh, <laughs> Cheers. Sleep here. Cheers. What do you think? Definitely goes straight to the nose. Mm. It's warm. You find it warm at the end? Yeah, and yeah, not some, at the very some, end. Uh, there's very some heat there. Yeah. It's almost it's, a cinnamony kind of taste. Yeah, but it falls off, right? Mm. I find it pretty warm on the tongue, for sure. Yeah. I'm getting like but it's a, not a, a it's cinnamon not a, and peppermint kind of. A there's definitely a, I would call it a pepper for sure. Um, there's definitely some heat, but it's not like a punchy heat. It's like a slow build. And it kind of just lingers around and sticks around to me. There's some sweetness right at the beginning, and it goes away to the heat pretty quick. I find. Yeah, there's a there's a real uh, it really eats away at the, the sides of your mouth when, when it first hits, and then, uh, then the heat goes away, and it leaves almost a cooling sensation of a of a peppermint. Is what I'm sort of feeling. In the I know what you mean. Yeah, I've never out. I've never expressed it that way, but I see what you mean. The heat's intense, but then it's it's that openness 
yeah. that you'd have from it having leaves a, it. It leaves a cooling after it yeah. after subsides. That's interesting. I wonder if other ones have done that. They just haven't been described that way to me. You know, mm. but I know what you mean. It's like that, that gum that's too strong and yeah. opens all your pores, so you yeah. taste everything, but it's. Yeah. yeah, I'm searching for a fruity, peaty something, oh, wow. but it's not there. I am not getting it no. at all. Like, I, There's something sweet right at the beginning. It's yeah. a vanilla or something like a little sweet, but the heat yeah. dominates and gets rid of it. Yeah. I, uh, I like it. Yeah. It's not, uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but uh, you know, I, it's not that I would. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll get into whether or not you'll buy it again later. Yeah. Um, let's uh, let's see what the actual thing says here. So it says malty, toasty, elegant. Uh, it's made in American and French oak barrels. Uh, non natural color and non-chill filtered. So there's no added coloring. So what we're seeing is actually the real color of the whiskey. Um, it is a blended malt scotch whiskey from Scotland. Uh, there you go. Let's see. Uh, it says, uh, the name Oak Cross comes from our use of both American and French oak and the maturation of the whiskey. We begin by sourcing whiskeys from three single malt distilleries, one for its ethereal fruity character, one for its enchanting perfume, I said perfume, oh. and one that lends a complex and substantial structure to the blend. Uh, all are aged in American oak cast before we place a portion into innovative hybrid cast featuring heavily toasted new French oak heads. This gives the whiskey an added richness and spice-like complexity. Spice -like. It's like a spicy. Yeah. Cinnamon's a spice. Yeah, I, it's definitely <laughs> got some heat there. Uh, by carefully blending back the French oak aged whiskey with its American oak aged forebear, we are able to create a refined, rich, but well-mannered malt whiskey with fruity aspects that will remind you of baked apple or pears. It's not there. It is. <laughs> it's I'm a natural. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't say anything about it on the nose. It says on the taste, but well, maybe maybe you got it. Complimented by a rich, toasty oak character. Uh, serve it anyway, any time you like, and above all, enjoy. Share and enjoy, it says. So I did share it. So there we go. Perfect. Um, yeah, Perfect. it's a nice bottle. I like it. actually has an embossment of the word compass box on the back. I don't know if you can see that. And an embossment of, uh, what is this, their logo on the front? Yeah, quite nice. And uh, when I saw the word compass box, I thought, oh, it's got a compass, but that's actually a drawing compass, not a navigational compass. So I was a little disappointed only because I'm a <laughs> bit of a sucker for a navigational compass, but it's still very nice. It's good whiskey. Yeah. Um, we'll finish this off, add some water, see if it changes it. Yes, let's do that. So would you say, what would you tend to go to if you're going to grab a, uh, any kind of whiskey beverage? Would you grab... A single malt scotch, a blend, do you care, do you try new things? What's your go-to? Well, I've been staying away from blends. That's nice. I mean, like, actually, it's starting to really, I don't know what happens to your palate after a while, whether you, you get over the initial shock and then it really starts to bring out some more of the taste. I think but the, I do, uh, the first shot of alcohol, anytime you drink, always tends to make it a little different than what it probably really tastes like. Oh, look at you're gonna come. Look at James, you need to step it up and pour me some water. Look at this. I'm getting spoiled here now. <laughs> Any changes in the, the notes? No, in the notes, yeah. Sometimes adding. Oh, definitely. A, yeah. I taste like I smell vanilla, like it just jumps out of the glass at me. Yeah. Yeah. Is you smell that? Yeah. Like, so I smelled a little bit at the first. Oh, no, it's I think not the, even. But I think the alcohol was overpowering. Yeah, it's sweet. It's almost like a candy. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? Oh, wow. Three drops what of water. That's incredible. Like, I, I know I heard you talk about that, but this is the first time I've, I've truly experienced this phenomenon. It, it's funny because it is. It's, uh, what we tend to do at home, and I've done it at your house and you've done it at mine, we prepare whiskey the way we used to drink whiskey, whether it's having it with an ice or a frozen cube or a little bit of water, hmm. and you pour your glass that way and you experience it that way. But here, because we we're forcing ourselves to try whiskey tasting, try it neat, try it with a bit of water, and we can always, almost always see the A-B comparison. Right, yeah. especially so it's yeah, and it is dramatic. I can say. I well, there's two it's... things that are happening: both the water and sure. also the fact that you've already had a few sips, mm. right? So the alcohol is not as 
Yeah, dull it, for right? Yeah. Once you've desensitized a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes me wonder what's going on. I am a chemical engineer by trade, so <laughs> I just want to know what's going on. <laughs> exactly. Welcome. What do you think? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. What do you think? I, I know what's changed already. What do you think? No difference off the, off the bat. No, really? No, the notes, like the, the nose, totally different. And the mouth, I don't pick up too much of a difference. Really? Right off the bat, first instinct. But... Wow, because I feel an incredible difference. Now, mind you, I poured you a lot more than I poured myself. Well, not that much more. So for me, I'm gonna give you one more second. Have one more sip and tell me if you notice yeah. anything. Well, I mean, there's a different taste in my mouth right now, even after just, just after learning sort of set in, I can't describe it. what it is, I, I couldn't tell you. But, uh, I, both James and I have a real hard time saying what we taste. And so it's easy for yeah. us to describe the profile of what we taste as opposed to flavors, right? Is it hot? Is it spicy? Yeah. Is it, you know, a sweet? Is it savory? Is it, you know? And I know like you guys talked about the, the lyric hits me in the palate, like, mm -hmm. geographically. I mean, I found that kind of interesting. I, I never, really, love, I I never we, really thought about we that. We keep saying you, we want to learn more about what the tongue, where the areas in the tongue are and what right, they do. Yeah. And I know like sweetness tends to be at the front. And so there's a few things I know, but I've never actually really looked. And I should actually print out a reference manual because... It's be interesting to try, like, you know, really try to localize the... Yeah, the tasting area. Because then, if something the is area. is hot or something is feeling like it's getting more action than other spaces, you can say, okay, that's probably something that's spicy or it's maybe sweet, but it's maybe still a little too alcoholic to actually taste yet. You know. So, is there any difference for you? I can definitely taste way more pear now, but I'll tell you the biggest difference for me. The biggest difference for me was that the spice level has dropped dramatically. Yeah. But I feel like that little sweetness I was getting at the beginning hasn't changed, but I can taste it way more because the spice has dropped. Because I felt before like the little bit of sweetness was getting dominated by the spice almost, not instantly, but really quick. So it'd be a bit of sweetness and then boom, spice. Mm -hmm. Now I'm getting that kind of sweetness that lingers and the spiciness is slowly coming in. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting a little like after it's, after the, the, the fiery sensation sort of, because this is a very fiery. Oh, it's got stock. some ice heat. It's like, got some. You know, it, it does. Uh, but it's not a all of a sudden punch. It's a. It's a. It's, a, it's, it's tolerable. A, it's quite tolerable, but it's it's you know like a, yeah. it's, a, it's a spicy. It's a build up, but it's know, not sensation. slow. Yeah. Like a, you know, like a strong kind of peppermint uh, feeling. Yeah. But and you're right. There that, is more of a there is a you know a, a caramelly kind of taste, and I know that's a very especially after yeah. you find that when it when it comes down. Yeah. After, only after. Right. <laughs> because it's overpowering at the beginning. Well, anyway, I found vanilla and then heat, and then as it's coming down, you're right. Before you said it was that effervescence of having Smart. had mint that's going to open you all up, but now I, you're right. I feel yeah. the caramel. It smells like something we have plugged into the wall at home. It's just it's nice, and I love the smell of it actually now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not bad. I like it. Um, which leads us to the question. I would say, would you buy it again? You didn't even buy it. You showed up and got the drink, but uh, I'll let you know how much it you was. see how I did that. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> would you buy this for your home collection? I, uh, and I don't think it would sway me from, from, from buying the, you know, single malt. Uh, I really don't, but uh, I like it. It just isn't something that I would go out to search for. Now, it's $70. A cheap, you know, which is not cheap, but it's but it's a little a higher whiskey. and for a for a blended whiskey, right? Oh, for um, a blended, yeah, okay, I guess. for a blended whiskey, that's that's high. Um, it's higher than some of our single malts, right? Um, and again, we're just doing blends right now. Um, it's not the most expensive blended blend we've had. Um, James brought one that was was a little more, um, but it's a little pricey. Um, I don't think. I don't think I'd buy it again for that price point because it's blend. Yeah. And there's nothing about this blend that stands out to me that goes, oh, that's that's even this better is the best than of that. The blends. Right, like, yeah, exactly. Not, so yeah. so you know, you know, we've had a blend that was like 40 bucks that was like, well, this is comparable to a single malt. I would say this is also comparable to a single malt. There's some single malts that would be just as good as this. Oh yeah. yeah but you know what? So. If it's gonna sit on my shelf yeah. and it says single malt, and I know that's pretentious. Um, I am impressed with it comes in a box. I am impressed that it comes with a cork. Beautiful presentation. A absolutely. Very nice. Yeah. So, 
Um, and they make a lot of different blended whiskeys, so maybe I will try one of the other uh, Compass Box blends as opposed to buying this again. Notes of clove spice and vanilla accent. Clove uh, spice. Clove spice. We've clove. said spicy. You, they you like said cinnamon. Pepper. I was kind of like, yeah, it's not cinnamon, but it's peppery. Something but you know like what? You're that. right. It is clove. And a sweet maltiness and a little subtle fruit uh, character. You know, there was a long time where blended scotch was prized more than cinnamon malt. And hmm. that the art of blending a good quality scotch from multiple different sources was an art in and of itself. Right? To actually get the recipe nailed so that you make a single malt and it comes out great is hard, but that take multiple whiskeys and put them together and make an excellent blend is, is, is an art and a talent. Um, and it's funny how this was prized way more than single malts for a long time, right? Um, anyway, but yeah, so. What I will say is that I enjoyed that glass more than the other glass. Yeah. And I enjoyed the last drink more than the first drink out of that glass. And it seems like the, if the strain continues, like, <laughs> I could, we'll be done the bottle. I could thoroughly I... enjoy that bottle. <laughs> by the time we get to the end. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it does get better. I will say that. It does, uh, yeah, All right, let's pour one small last round, one top higher. it up with water, sure. and uh, say goodbye to these lovely folks. All right. All right, James, this one's for you and your mom. Cheers. Cheers. See you next week, or maybe the week after. <laughs>